Well, it is May 31st, and I'm going to pop the covers off these three hives we made just to take a peek inside and see if they're ready for uh, some more frames to work on or how well they're working on them. Most of the frames I put in had eggs in them or were already getting filled with nectar. I did give them some empties and some, uh, some foundation in a few of them. So I just need to take a look inside and see if they're ready for more room or if they're okay for a while. It's, uh, it's about 5 o'clock in the afternoon. It's nice, 91 outside. It's nice and hot in, in the bee veil and the jacket. So I'm going to try to do this as quick as possible. The dogs are over here helping me out. There's a little bit of activity this late in the afternoon. I mean, you're not going to see a ton of bees out. Most of these should have been, you know, had eggs in them or laying eggs. So the, the first real big workforce hasn't hatched yet. So it's not going to be as cram-packed as bees as you would think. There's still, oh, a lot of what I saw was probably still a good week, week and a half away from really emerging. I did put some cat, a frame of cat brood from other hives in all of these. So they should have had at least one good frame of workers, you know, nurse bees and workers hatching out. So there's going to be bees in them, just they're not going to be packed like a normal full-size hive. So I'm going to break them open and take a look inside. And if I find anything interesting, I'll, uh, I'll let you see. So while I'm doing this, I'll show you. All I brought with me was my little, my little tool kit, my little plastic ammo box. And just doing really light inspections like this, there's no need to bring a big smoker. I just have my little Imker's Fife. I'll light it, and if I need a little puff here or there, I'll have it. I'll have to get the whole big smoker out. Get my J-hook tool, frame grabbers if I need to pull a frame out and take a look, and then just you know, a little lighter from my M care in case I need it. I may not even light it if I don't need to use it. It lights so fast and you don't have to light it in advance until you know you're going to need it. That's all I need, just this one little box. So I'll go ahead and light it just to have it lit, that way you can see it burning. And, uh, I already took all the straps off everything and we'll, we'll pop them open and take a peek. I'll show you real quick. My own car is lit. And, uh, I'm not sure how well I can try to show you this. Um, I'm just have a normal veil on and I can just push it up through my veil and blow. Flip it around and I'll see if you can see what's going on even though I can't see the screen. So if you can see me at all, I'm just using just a normal veil, instead of having an opening cut in here with a little grommet, I can just push it through and blow on it. Just remember to blow your screen back out. And if I need to use it, that's what I'll do. Let me show you. I don't care. I'll blow up the side of the phone while you look. It's nice, you can just do a little puff here and there. Just need to get a little smoke in there to bust up that alarm pheromone without breaking out a whole big smoker. That's all I'm going to do to it. I don't need any more smoke, so uh, get back to look inside. Alright, here is some of the, the small cell foundation I put in. Get the shade out of the way. As you can, I don't know how well you can see in the camera. Just this little patch they've started drawing. The queen has already got eggs put in here. She's put eggs in every single available cell she has. So I'm going to probably go ahead and give this one some more frames just to give her more room to work. Because if she's desperate enough to get eggs in that little patch that's drawn out, then she's really hunting for space. I've already gone through the first hive. Uh, my phone, I set it down out in the sun and it got too warm. So to cool down before let me record again. Took some pictures of the queen, but you're not going to get to see video. Get this to focus. I'm going to show you. It'll focus. Come on. Press it with my nose to get it to. There we go. Focus. Lots of new babies going on in here. I don't know how well you can see that in the sun. It's 
different stages are of the side of those. And I don't have a free hand to keep hitting this to focus. I keep using my nose. So hopefully, when I look back at this later, you'll be able to see something inside of there. Not really any eggs in here. There's really small larvae. And there's a few eggs up here towards the top. Some of those. So a frame like this would have a good, the right age to uh, graft from. So if I was grafting right now, this would be the perfect frame because it's got a little bit of everything and I can find that sweet spot of age. I wouldn't have to settle for whatever I could get. I could take out exactly what I wanted right out of this a frame like this. When I graft this weekend, I may come steal some out of these because they're not packed with bees yet. They've got a good assortment going on. There she is. There's the queen in the second hive. And take some pictures while I'm here with the video running. Here she goes. Too much sunlight finally. She can look for the shady the shady side of the frame. Alright, we're in hive number three. Show you what's going on. This is a small cell foundation that I pulled out of one of the bigger hives. It was all nice cat brood when I put it in. As you can see, it's all hatched to give this hive a boost. In each of these three hives, I gave my frame like this. And focusing is always a problem like this. But these already have eggs and small larvae that have hatched in them. There's nothing older. Well, there's a few bigger ones. The majority of it's, you know, under... You know, it's been laid within the last, you know, five or six days. So it's had enough time for uh, the brood to hatch out, cells to be clean and to be laid back in and to grow up to six or seven days. So this, each hive's got a nice little burst of workers and uh, you now all the cells are starting to get filled in with more babies again. I have no idea how well you can see this. It's such a glare on my screen. And I'm focusing with my nose, so... Yeah. This is focused, I want to show you. I get to show you this last time. This hive's queen. That's the queen cell that she emerged from. You see how it's nice? Let's focus. See how it's nice and rough around the edges? That's a sign that the queen actually came out on her own. It chewed, uh, chewed that cap off. If she was stung to the side and killed, the bees would open it up and pull her out. If you don't see any side damage, it's nice and chewed open and not smooth around. That means the queen has been in there and she's hatched and emerged. This isn't like a false queen cell where there's nothing ever in it. If it was, it'd be nice and smooth and rounded on the edges. So this hive, I actually just put this frame with this one cell in it. And uh, that's where she came from. Yeah, 
so I popped the I popped the lid off the well, I cracked the lid open. So I cracked the lid open on this hive, blow a little bit of smoke in, shut the lid for a minute, let them run out of the way. Took the lid off, and all I'm doing is looking inside the top to see how well they're getting along. I put in some small cell foundation, as you can see from a wax up here. Sorry about that. I had a message on my phone. Um, as you can see from the wax, I'm putting honey in supers and they're capping it off. Most of the time I run nine frame and supers, but since I've got foundation stuff I'm drawing out, I'm doing ten frame. So basically, to see how well they're getting along, I think going to need more room soon. I want to look at these small cell foundation frames, see how well they're drawn out and filled, to get an idea of how fast they're putting food away. It looks like these three, they're pulled out pretty well. So are these three. Let's see if I can do this one-handed. Wedge these apart. And get the middle frame out of the small cell foundation. That way there's less likely to be somebody to smash. Switch hands here. Take a peek and see what it looks like inside. Well, they've started drawing on it. And they're already putting nectar in it. And the small cell the side of it is drawn out. And that one's starting to be drawn out on the back side. We've got a lot of good rain lately. It's nice and warm. There's a flow on. So I'm going to go ahead and give this um, box... This hive and never box is just straight foundationless. And I'm going to checkerboard it with this frame, with this box and these frames. And uh, we can take a look at one of these if we want to see if there's any brood up inside of it. Since I don't run queen excluders, if she's getting cramped for room, she'll come up and put eggs up towards the supers. It's pretty heavy, like it's a honey frame. Yep. You can see she's laid in it. Uh, even where it's hatched, they're trying to put nectar and food in down here, but she's already getting sticking eggs up in the corners before they can get nectar into it. Same down here. There's eggs in it. So as they ha these new ones hatch here, they'll try to put nectar into them. You know, she can beat them up. Two of them can clean and put eggs in them. So I've got to be really careful with this frame. For all I know, there could be a queen on it. Okay, there's not, but there's babies mixed in, so she is cramped for room to lay, and they're cramped for room for storage, so I'm going to go grab another box, throw some frames on it, and uh, I'm gonna do, there's, yeah, there's more brood in that one down there, I'm going to carefully put this one back in, and shut this phone off so I don't hurt anybody while I'm doing this, okay, time to get another box. You want to get a sense of how fast bees can draw things out. I put five small cell frames on my hive at the same time. Oh, it was like two, three weeks ago. I have to go back and check the videos, pictures to make sure. But just to show you, I'm gonna say it's only been three weeks' time. Maybe a hair longer, but yeah, it's in that time frame somewhere. As you can see, that was foundation, small cell, and then flow hit so well instead of putting brood in it, they hurried up and drew it out and started putting honey in it. So I was trying to use it up since I had it laying around, hoping to get brood put in there, but there's honey. So they may move it later after I extract this year. If I do extract this, it'll eventually become brood again. But uh. See how nice and light that stuff is coming in. So, right now, I mean, we're in a good flow right now. So, 
So at the moment I'm checkerboarding. So I'm going through primarily. Where's my phone again? I'm running out of power. I'm primarily I'm I'm checkerboarding every other frame with empty foundationless. But as I find ones that are primarily honey, I'm moving them towards the box I'm gonna put on top. And the ones that are more primarily brewed or open still, I'm putting down lower. It'll just be less work for them to have to move food around to put brood in it later since they want to keep brood lower and food higher. So I'm either putting it up higher or putting it to the edges just to save them some work down the road since I'm manipulating them to where, you know, in nature I wouldn't be in here adding things and juggling things around and, and screwing them up. Uh, so I'll alternate these with whatever arrangement of frames I think I need. Put another box on it and call it good. Then I'll leave them alone. And a couple weeks from now, I'll take another peek in this next top box, this white one. And do what I'm doing right now. I'll see how well they're drawn out. Food, is it babies? How much more? How many more boxes do they need? Typically, during the peak of the year, I'll have brood going through at least five medium boxes. So I'm expecting this last box, that's about where my brood nest is going to top out. I'll have honey on the edges and honey above it by the time it's done. You know, if it's a decent year, you never know year of the year exactly how it's gonna go. But typically, running all mediums, a mixture, mainly foundationless with some foundation in it and doing no clean excluder, I generally plan on having five mediums worth of a brood. And this box down here, I you know most of mine are empty on the bottom. This one I moved things around and forgot and I actually put frames back in it. So these four right now do have brood all the way through them. They're not empty like I usually keep on the bottom. It's getting warm now, so I'm really not worried about it anyway. As fall comes around, I'll make sure to get one put back under it. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get these moved around and done. So if I don't record anything else on here today, I will see you guys next time. One more thing, since I just got done checkerboarding, my phone got hot again, I had to shut it down. You need to stagger the way they're checkerboarded. So with this one, my first frame on the left, this is drawn, empty, drawn, empty. So this one's drawn. The one going above is empty, drawn, empty, drawn. That way as they, they come and work up through the frames, instead of having empties all in a row, you have an empty, then an empty, then an empty. It makes them work their way up and pretty much hit all the frames as they're traveling. That way they notice them uh, more often. It keeps them from wanting to work in one section and not moving over. Kind of, It's like the Plinko game on Price is Right. Everybody kind of gets shuffled back and forth all the way through. And that way they'll kind of equally spread out and work on everything. So uh, time to seal this hive up, throw all the straps back in everybody, and get in the house before I pass out from not drinking enough out in the heat.